Hello and welcome to the first part of the Weapon Equipment System tutorial. This will pretty much be setting up the project and doing some prep work before we actually start building the system itself. Here I have created a new Unreal project with the third person template. And what I'll be doing first is to import the assets that I need for this project. If you haven't done so, you can get the animation files from my coffee shop website. So you can follow along this tutorial if you choose to do so. If you download the anim asset zip file, and extracted it in your computer, you should get a whitebot folder like this right here. And within this whitebot folder, you'll see a bunch of XBX files. And these are the Mixamo animation files that I'll be providing to you guys for this tutorial so you can follow along and learn. And I also made some adjustments for the skeleton of the whitebot, and I'll explain why I did it when I'm covering the animation retargeting later on in the tutorials. To import the whitebot into the project file, it's fairly simple. Just uh, for me, I'll go to the characters folder and then create a new folder called the whitebot, like that. And then from here, I'm going to right click and then import to game. And I'll just choose the whitebot over here, the whitebot FBX file. Open that. And then you don't really need to do much um, with the settings. All I'm going to do is going to do import all, or you can do import. And then I'll import the FBX mesh into the project. And you can ignore all these too. All right, so now we have the whitebot in our project. Now we need the animations. So same thing, I'm gonna right click, import to game. And then I'm gonna just gonna select shift and click to select everything over here. And then I'm gonna open. And the same thing, I'm just gonna do import all. All right, so now we have all the animations in here. And if we open it and to check, we can see that all the animations are working properly, like so. Okay, and this will be how you can import the Ybot into the project itself. So I'm gonna do save as, save all, and then just save it for now. In terms of weapons, I'll be using the Infinity Blade weapons provided by Epic Games for people to use. You can get it from the Unreal Marketplace. It's free to download, and it recently got updated to support Unreal Engine 5.2 projects. So you can get the weapons from here by clicking on Add to Project, or you can use the weapons that you already have. Once you have the Infinity Blade weapons added into your project, it should be in your Contents folder, like over here, right here. And if you click into it, into the weapons, you can see that there's a, uh, different weapons that you could use. So there's that. Next, let's make a folder called Blueprint. So right click and then go to new folder. And I'm gonna call this Blueprint, like so. So we will put all the Blueprint related files that we will need to create within this folder. And another thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to the third person and then go into Blueprints here. I'm gonna move this third person into the Blueprints folder that I created. So I'm gonna move it here and it'll be in this blueprint folder. And I'm doing this so that I won't be needing to click around too much in order to find this specific blueprint whenever I need to open it. So there's that. Within this blueprint folder, I'll create another folder. And then I'm gonna name this as weapons. Okay. And I'll creep all the weapons related blueprint into this folder. Within this weapons folder, we're going to start creating some blueprints for our weapons. Since there will be different types of weapons that we will use, and their functionality will be pretty similar, it will be unwise if you create all the weapons using different blueprint classes of its own, right? So that's where the concept of inheritance comes in. We'll be creating a base class. And in terms of this tutorial, we can name it as base item, like right here. And within this base item, for example, we can have variables A and B and functions A. Then from this base item class, we can make child classes, for instance, a base weapon and a base consumable child class. These child classes will inherit variables and functions from the parent class, which will be the base item right here. So they will inherit variables A and B and functions A, and they themselves can have their own sets of variables and functions. So for example, it can have its own, for the base weapon, it can have variables C and D and functions B and C, and for the base consumables, it could have variables E and F and function D and E. And then from these child classes, we can have another layer of child classes, which may be classes for 
the sword, the great sword and axe, a health potion or a stamina potion kind of item. And they all will inherit variables and functions from their parents and the parents of the parent. And this is essentially what inheritance is about and it could be a very powerful tool for you to use when you develop a game. Since we'll be going over the weapons in this tutorial, I will be only building blueprints for the weapons. Back into our Unreal project in our weapons folder, I'm going to create the base item for our weapon. So right click and then go to the blueprint class. And then our weapons are going to be actors. For the name, I'm going to name it as BP base item. Now I can click into the base item. Within this base item, I'm going to add in a skeletal mesh. If your item that you're going to use is going to be a skeletal mesh, then we'll do a skeletal mesh. But if it's a um, static mesh, then I'll add in a static mesh as well. So this will be actually, let me rename this as base static. And then I'll rename this as base skeleton. So depending on the item that we're using, whether it's static or skeletal, we can choose between if we want to use it as a static or a skeletal mesh in the future, right? So there's that. Within this base item blueprint, we're going to have a function which we can attach the item onto the player. So in the functions tab, let's press the plus sign and I'll create a new function. I'm going to name this function as attach to character. Like so. And from the attach to character, I will find right click and find the node for attach to attach actor to component right here. And let's link that up. So for the attack to actor to component, what we need is we need a parent and we need a socket name. So for the parent, we will use the third person character. So first let's go ahead and right click and search for get owner. And from the get owner, let's do a cast to third person character right here. And you'll see that we might need to connect nodes into the third person character. But actually we don't need to. All we need to do is right click and then turn this into a pure cast. So then we don't need to connect the execution line into anything in the third person character. If you are to plug in this into the parent, uh, you can see that you're, it's not compatible. And the reason why it is, we need to use the mesh of the character instead, right? So let's um, drag out from the node and then do a mesh, search for mesh, so we can get a get mesh. And from this get mesh, let's just plug it into the parent here, like so. And you can see that we need a socket name for the mesh for our character. So in order to add, attach our item onto the character, we will need to have a socket for the weapon itself, right? So from the attached to character, I'm going to make an input. And the input um, variable will be a name. And I'll just name this as the socket name, like so. And then I'll plug the socket name into the socket. And this will be our attach to character function right here. Let's compile and save. In order to know which socket, what the socket name is, we're going to make a variable for the socket itself. So let's add in a variable and change this into a name. And I'm going to rename this as attach to socket. Oops. I can spell correctly, to socket like that. And then I'm going to compile and save. And we're gonna we can leave this um, as attached to socket as none for now. One more thing I forgot to do: uh, at the location rule, rotation rule, and the scale rule, you want to change these into snap to target. So let's go ahead and do that. Oops. Now let's compile and save. Back to our weapons folder, and we can now create a child blueprint from the base item blueprint. So. All we have to do is to right click on the base item and then go to the very top. There's a create child blueprint class. So click on that and then it'll create a child class. And for this one, I'm going to call this the base weapon. Like so. 
And if you hover over the base weapon, you can see that the parent class is the base item blueprint. Let's go ahead and click into the base weapon. So on this child blueprint, the functions and variables will be there. However, it won't be shown. As you can see, there's no variables here and the functions, there's no um, attached to character right here. But you can still get the variables and functions in the event graph. So if you go to the event graph and if I go type um, get attach to character uh, to socket, you can see that the socket is right here, right? And as for the function, um, if I do attach to character, you can call we can call the function right here, and this will trigger the function for the in the base item. If you ever need to change the function. Uh, we can go to the functions tab over here and then there's an overwrite. From the overwrite, there's the attached to character over here. If we click on that, you can see that the attached to character function will be here with the along with the parent attached to character function. And if you need to add more stuff to this function, we can go ahead and add more things behind the parent of the attached to character. So so it will read the parent the stuff in the base item and then it will read the stuff in this um what base weapon blueprints so there's that option if you ever need to but for this tutorial where we don't really need to touch anything else within this attached to character function let's close that what we need to do in this um base weapon is um, later on we're going to add in the fun interaction functionalities to the with the character so that's going to be a few uh, in a future episode but for this one, um, right now, I'm just going to go in and from the base skeleton. Since all the weapons from the Infinity Blade are um, a skeletal mesh, I'm going to use the base skeletal mesh here. And then from the base skeletal mesh, I'm going to add in a collision, so box collision. So I'm just going to add in this box collision. So this will act as the collision detection box for interaction with our character. So. I'm gonna put this in here so that when I make a child for this weapon, then the, the collision box will be here, right here. So let's compile and save that for now. And I'm gonna change this into, uh, actually, I'll just say box collision actually, like that. And that will be all for the base weapon for now. Let's close that. And then from the base weapon, I'm going to um, create another child blueprint. So I will make another layer of um, child from this um, base weapon. And the first weapon I'm going to use is I'm going to do, let me see, weapon sword. I'm just going to use a sword, a simple sword for the first weapon that we're going to implement. And if we click into the weapon, um, what I'm going to do is to create at the at the scale of mesh asset, so I'm going to use the hero sword eleven right here. So this will be our um, main um, sword that we're going to use as our weapon type, sword weapon type. And as for the collision, I'm just going to ch um, change the size of the collision to somewhere near where the sword is going to be around. So let me just um, adjust that for now. Make that a bit to the top and then scale that down a bit more. So I'm just going to have this um, collision envelope this entire sword like so. And actually, maybe I can do it a bit thinner. Yep, like that. All right, so now we have the blueprints for the base item, the weapons, base weapon, and the weapon itself, one of the weapons itself. This will be the end of this episode, where I'll go over the setup and the prep work that we have to go through in order to for us to start creating the system that we want to make. So in the next video, I'm going to go over how you can pick up and interact with the player, so you can pick up the sword, and possibly if I have time, I'll go over how you can drop the sword as well. So look forward to that. And again, I'll try to create these videos as fast as I can. And I hope you guys will enjoy this tutorial series. Thank you for watching. And as always, never stop learning.